Welcome back everyone, and in this episode, we will be synthesizing benzaldehyde from this paint thinner here, or paint stripper, because it's actually not paint thinner, it's goo, but yeah. Now, before you now ready viewers start commenting, Edward, aren't you just running the Itard reaction on Toluene? This is not Toluene. You cannot buy Toluene in California as a paint stripper, because dumb laws. This is actually benzyl alcohol, so that's pretty neat. Now, I do have Toluene, just got it. Um, I sent off some glassware to a guy, and he sent me some Toluene. And uh, maybe I'll try running a target reaction in the future. Well, not on Halloween, because that's lame. I don't want benzaldehyde. I want some more interesting things, such as nitrobenzaldehyde for um, indigo synthesis, which I've been having trouble with that. Especially because I used all my sodium. But uh, yeah, we'll be synthesizing benzaldehyde from the benzyl alcohol here. So, um, yeah, let's get on with it. Now, I do have a video showing how to extract benzyl alcohol from this thing, but clickbait. I'm gonna say I'm gonna turn paint stripper into benzaldehyde, okay? <laughs> now, ideally, I would use a three-neck or two-neck uh, two-liter flask, and I do have a two-liter flask. It's just that it only has one neck, and it's quite annoying to deal with just one neck. See, I do have a two-liter flask. <laughs> it's been sort of unused because I don't really have any two large-scale things to do other than solvent distillations, and I don't even have a two-liter heating mantle yet, so I have been heating it in oil baths and water baths and such but uh yeah we'll be using this one liter flask which means that we're gonna have to separate this into two parts which i'm fine with because i don't want to use all of the benzyl alcohol for benzaldehyde i don't really have a use for benzaldehyde so i'm just open the stupid foil so i'm gonna rat i'm gonna rat i'm gonna add roughly half of this stuff into this flask and ooh, it's a lot less goopy than usual it's more like a glue than anything that's neat uh, that should be enough. Maybe a bit more, actually. The issue is that, of course, it foams when you try to distill it, so, um, that's gonna be fun. However, I'm gonna knock down the foaming, and also, we're gonna do this under a vacuum, because last time I didn't do it under a vacuum, I ended up burning the whole thing, because of the stupid glue polymer in there, so, hooray. Okay, so, I'm just gonna get it all into the flask. This is really inefficient. Oh well, that's about as much as I'll get into there. Now I'm gonna set up the apparatus around it. Okay, so here's our apparatus. We have our Swiss mix on top of the uh, flask to stir it. Uh, let me just show you. Stirs. And it goes through this condenser connector thing into a three neck flask, which will serve as a receiver. And we have our free condenser connected here. So, anything that distills will go into this flask and reflux back into here. Now, the reason I didn't set up in a conventional uh, vacuum distillation is because, well, we have water in here, which is going to boil uh, very near room temperature, especially because I'm pairing this with an aspirator pump. It's going to get, it, a lot of the water is going to evaporate, and that's going to carry some benzyl, uh, benzyl alcohol over because it forms an azeotrope. Hence this here, it's very similar to a rotovap setup, where you have your rotovapping flask here, goes into a receiver, which then goes through a condenser here. So, um, yeah, let's get it started, I guess. Let's turn on the vacuum. And vacuum meter's going down, that's good. Turn on our water cooling. And plug in our heating mantle. I need to shorten this cord far too long. Uh, oh, there we go, turn this on, and um, vacuum still dropping, that's good. Though I think I'll shut off for now, we can pull the vacuum once everything's warmed up, so, yeah. Okay, I've actually decided to remove the vacuum for now because you can see the water was getting past the condenser. So I'm just going to let all the water distill over first, and then I'll swap out the receiver to collect our benzyl alcohol under vacuum. Then it's worth doing under vacuum. Now be me being the impatient person I am, decided to do under vacuum anyways with a long condenser. This is a bit faster. Still took like an hour though, but here's our water azeotrope. It's still just condensing away, but very rapidly, so that's why I did it under vacuum. Now you can see after all the water azeotrope has been distilled out, it has become a clear gel, so I swapped the receiver out to collect our pure benzyl alcohol. 
And after a little while, I eventually got over 100 milliliters or so. I distilled out the rest of the paint stripper as well. And I took my aqueous layers, combined them, and extracted them with dichloromethane, twice with 50 milliliters approximate. And this is because benzyl alcohol is soluble in water, so we're gonna have a bit loss if we don't do this, and by a bit I mean 100 milliliters. So after separating the dichloromethane, I dried it with some magnesium sulfate. You cannot use calcium chloride because it will complex with the benzyl alcohol. After distilling the dichloromethane off and combining it with the other benzyl alcohol we have, we have approximately 200 milliliters or so, which is a great yield, considering last time I got 100. Now, the first idea I had for oxidizing this to benzaldehyde was to use ma uh, potassium permanganate. Now, this stuff, it works, but it's not really the best, as you'll see in a second. It's quite an exothermic reaction, and um, also, my stoichiometry was off, so there's that. You can see it got to 70 Celsius, and uh, me being impatient, I decided, oh, it can't be that exothermic, so I started pouring it in, and it went boom. And, uh, yeah. Okay, it's the next day, and, um, yeah, I still haven't cleaned all of it up. I mean, it even went on the light, <laughs> and also into the fan, I think. Well, the fan's already coated in sulfur from the sulfur chloride, because that's the hydrolyzes and wet air. Okay, there we go, glasses all cleaned up. Uh, I ran out of sodium out of my sulfite, so I found if you put vitamin C in it with a bit of hydrochloric acid just spicing it up, it works really well to clean off magnesium dioxide. Very effective. Uh, however, yeah, I'm too lazy to clean up the sash, and also it already has stains from a uh, cedic acid explosion anyways, so I don't really mind. <laughs> it's not like I look through the sash often. Let's just try it scaled down. So, let me get some benzyl alcohol out. I'll use two grams of it. There we go, potassium permanganate and benzyl alcohol. I'll add some water to this, and we can start addition. There we go. I'll add a little permanganate, get a good shake, cap it and shake it actually. I'll also add a drop of potassium bisulfate to act as an acid to help the reaction go along a bit faster. Okay, there you go. Dissolve it up, of course. Add some of this in. There you go. Cooled. <laughs> Okay, so my phone storage ran out, so, um, yeah, uh, I quickly deleted 275 videos, though, so they'll never ever see the light of day, but at least we can continue filming what's important, which is benzaldehyde. <laughs> so, uh, I think, uh, this should be done, so I think I'll just add it all into, uh, I'll filter it into a flask. Okay, towel filter, because of course... You know what, I give up. We're not doing this method. We're just gonna use nitric acid. Like I said, my stoichiometry is off because apparently manganese dioxide itself can oxidize benzyl alcohol into benzaldehyde, though I think it would not happen under these conditions that it was, uh, that I ran the reaction in, but oh well. Like I said, we'll be using the nitric acid method, which I found on Science Madness post here. I believe Tom's lab has also made a video on this before, but I'm going to be using a bit different method because I won't be using 68% nitric acid, I'll be using 92% because that's what I prepare. So, like I said, it's nitric acid montage time because I actually don't have a uh, lot of nitric acid in stock now. I, I can make it, I have a lot of nitrate, I just don't have as much sulfuric acid and I'm too lazy to prepare it right now. But uh, yeah, enjoy this. And uh, surprisingly, the acid concentration I got measured by density was 92%, so that's not too bad. So now time for the actual benzaldehyde. We're gonna use nitric acid as an oxidant. Now, this first run I messed it up, so I'm not gonna bother telling you the stoichiometry, even though it's displayed on the screen, we'll do it for the next one. But uh, yeah, so you can see here I'm actually diluting the nitric acid the wrong way around, just adding water to it, not, not the other way around, which is the correct way. Now, this might actually be beneficial. We do add a catalyst, which is sodium nitrite, and this reaction proceeds through a benzyl nitrite intermediate. However, sodium nitrite is quite hard to find now because of its other not-so-nice use of it. So, I think you might actually be able to just saturate the nitric acid with nitrogen dioxide gas before running the reaction instead of using sodium nitrite. However, I have to test this myself. You can see here what I mean by mess it up. I used a sodium hydroxide trap to destroy the nitrogen dioxide which is formed in this reaction. And it's like back, of course. 
So anyways, I tried to extract with Toluene to yield something, but the benzaldehyde I got was a miserable amount, so this, f so this run was considered a failure. So here's it is properly. 118 milliliters of 10% nitric acid, which I prepared by diluting 13 milliliters of fuming nitric acid in 105 grams of water, and 31 milliliters of benzyl alcohol, a gram of sodium nitrite, we heat it to 90 celsius for 4 hours. This is when gas evolution stops, I add it all into a separatory funnel, rinse out the flask of course, and separate the lower benzaldehyde layer off. Now we're going to set that aside for now, and we're going to extract the aqueous with some dichloromethane. Now I did not let this aqueous layer cool down, so um, yeah. And again, a big dumb. <laughs> so. Oh well, we're gonna lose some yield, but that's fine for me, because I'm not after yield, I just want some benzaldehyde around. So now we're gonna separate the dichloromethane layer off, and extract the aqueous again, and now we're gonna add dichloromethane um, benzaldehyde into the set funnel again, wash it with some sodium bicarbonate solution. This will remove some of the colored impurities and also the nitric acid, which interestingly, can actually be extracted into dichloromethane from aqueous solutions. So if you have some aqueous nitric acid and you shake with dichloromethane, nitric acid migrates into dichloromethane. However, dichloromethane and nitric acid is a bit unstable, so be wary of that. So after shaking it and of course venting it, I decanted off the uh, lower benzaldehyde dichloromethane layer and we can see we have some red liquid. That was discarded. Wash it again with some more sodium bicarbonate to remove some more of that coloring. It's not going to remove any more, but frankly, why not? It's not going to harm our yield by much anyways. And you can see my stopper's leaking. I need to get some cap plugs, like the plastic stoppers that you put in set funnels. And then I wash it with some brine, but I formed an emulsion, so I added in some more dichloromethane to break that up. Formed a, not really an emulsion, but just refused to separate cleanly. So here's our dichloromethane benzaldehyde mixture, and I separated it and dried it with some calcium chloride. We're taking advantage of the fact that calcium chloride absorbs benzyl alcohol to remove any excess. And after drying it for 10 minutes, I, I separated off the lower dichloromethane benzaldehyde layer into a flask, washed the calcium chloride with some more dichloromethane to remove as much benzyl uh, benzaldehyde as I could, and uh, we're going to distill the dichloromethane off. So this was done quite simply, ice cooled of course, and you can see it's going at a crazy rate, insane I know. So here you can see my dichloromethane is actually boiling from the radiant heat of my hot plate, insane I know, but it's a very good hot plate I built on myself. So after most of the dichloromethane was off, I left a tiny bit still distilling over because that contains a lot more benzyl uh, benzaldehyde, and I pulled a vacuum on the sub to vacuum to still over the benzaldehyde. Now, yes, this is not conventional vacuum distillation setup, but it works. Dean's Tharg apparatuses are underrated. They're literally distillations. They work great for distillation. Since TCR is quite refractive, and after leaving a tiny bit of residue in our flask, because you do not want to distill the yellow over, I, uh, I simply took it out of the uh, setup, and here it is. It has a tiny bit more dichloromethane, of course, because I left some with it. So I'm going to strip most of that off under a vacuum. And now I transfer it all into a smaller vial, and you can see here, it still makes my uh, brass blowtorch flame go blue, which means there's a tiny bit more dichloromethane. So I remove the final traces of dichloromethane by heating it with the cap loosely on. The cap is on there to prevent oxidation, because the oxygen otherwise will get in and ruin it. So I simply heated it until it was barely boiling, and that meant that the dichloromethane was completely gone. You can see in between shots that it's actually increasing volume from the heat. Pretty cool, huh? So here you can see it's slightly boiling, so I cap it off and I let it cool down. And you can see it's a tiny bit yellow, but that's fine. It'll be chemically pure. So there's our benzaldehyde, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be using this to synthesize some other compounds in the future. And we also have our benzyl alcohol here, 100 milliliters of it, and we'll be using this as well for some other fun things. So, um, yeah, look forward to other videos, and, uh, what?
Okay, so I now I would have ended the video here, but of course there's going to be an explosion of fire people, which I know will not watch the end of this video because of course they aren't. They're just going to see the first few seconds of me breaking glass or get mad, go on their computers and angrily type in the uh, Science General channel, oh, Edward just broke some glassware for views. That is absolutely maddening or something like that. Cope. I don't care. The glass was already cracked. It was already unusable. Literally, that Erlemeyer flask I smashed against the side of that wooden dresser thing, it had hot glue on it. <laughs> Look at it. It's, it's already broken. So, um, yeah. Also, some guy got mad at me for breaking a gram condenser and turning it into a beaker reflux condenser. To watch the people on there get mad at me while there's some guy boiling concentrated ammonia in a soda lime soda bottle over a, over a blowtorch flame, bubbling that ammonia gas into a graduate cylinder which is overflowing with copper nitrate onto a steel bowl. But, um, eh, who cares? <laughs> I like to see the malt, it's hilarious. Because pe people have said I'm a troll or something. I'm not. But I know the appeal now, and it's very entertaining. Because those people are getting mad over the tiniest of things, but oh well. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, the ending, it was a bit anticlimactic. I wanted to do some more fancy editing, but uh, it was badly executed, and I don't have any more... Uh, I do have some more sacrificial glassware that I can smash as a prop, but uh, um, I don't want to do it inside, which sort of ruins the effect, but oh well.